Auburn in the blue jerseys, Alabama in white. The Crimson Tide is kicking off, and it's number seven, Bucky Berry, doing the kicking. Neal and Beck are deep for Auburn, and the first kick goes out of the end zone, so the War Eagles put it in play first and ten at the 20. Bill Gargas, number 11, is the quarterback, and on the first play, hands it to number 44 as he comes to the right, the pitch out to Cedric McIntyre, and McIntyre is stopped cold by number 45, Wayne Rhodes. Well, uh, that was... That play was well defense. And back to, you know, there's about a 15 to 20 mile an hour win up there uh, yesterday, but we wanted the football so so much that we decided uh, to go against the win, and it didn't work out too bad. That was Kenny Burks, uh, Carl. Burks picked up three yards to the 23, and it's now third and seven for Auburn. And that's Gargas in slow motion, heading to the right. Again, the pitch out, this time to number 34, Kenny Burks coming at right end. And he has good blocking and a good alley of that. Uh, and then, uh, Kenny, incidentally, his final game was the leading ground gainer for Auburn yesterday. On that play, he picked up 13 yards. And on this play, McIntyre hits the middle for three more to the 39. And we are moving the ball real good along in here. Alabama, of course, we realized uh, before the game had a supreme, supremely good defense. And yesterday didn't disprove it at all. Uh, we didn't make much yardage on the ground. Our passing was a fiasco. Uh, but uh, above everything else, they moved the ball much better than uh, we had anticipated. Here's the first kick, and uh, Bum got, a, got, a, got off a good kick. He, he, his kicking was splendid yesterday, and the coverage was pretty good, except for a few occasions. But I guess the Alabama safety man was, was a, a, a great return. Uh, a man and gave us a little bit of trouble there. All right, uh, but let's hold on. No way in the world to miss a tackle like that. If your head's up, eyes open, and you're really uh, uh, after somebody. But anyway, uh, he didn't gain uh, very much of any. That's Todd keeping the ball. And uh, Auburn fans thought the Tigers had recovered a fumble on that play, but the officials ruled it was after the whistle. And Todd picks up four yards, making it third and seven from the 26. Well, that was the first of two fumbles yesterday that uh, there was some controversy over. And uh, I don't know, I, after 43 years of coaching, I still don't know what a fumble is. And I guess that's uh, an indication of some stupidity or something. Alabama fails to make a first down on their first possession. They punt to Auburn, and Neal returns it to the 37. Coach Paul Davis on the Tiger sideline. First and 10, Auburn at the 37, 945 left in the first quarter. McIntyre gets maybe one yard. Well, uh, the Alabama defense, as I pointed out, uh, is a tremendously fine defense. They're very quick, they're very uh, mobile, and uh, they get around real good. They have a lot of confidence, they have a lot of poise, and they've made it real difficult, not only on Auburn, but everybody else they've played. Gargus pass to Gilligan, picked up the first down, then Gargus gets to midfield by picking up three yards. Second and seven. The pitch out goes to Cedric McIntyre at right end, picks up maybe a yard into Alabama territory to the 49. Well, after the first play there, when Kenny Burks uh, got outside, it was, it was pretty difficult. And here's uh, just plain ability there on the part of uh, Philip Gargus. He stayed on his feet, maintained his balance, and moved the ball back to the line of scrimmage. Uh, pass protection yesterday was uh, not good. The punt goes to Willie Shelby at about the 14-yard line. He gets no more than back to the 16 before number 48, Greg G Gilligan, stops yeah. it. We talked about, uh, you know, covering those kicks on the sideline, and uh, I just simply asked the question, uh, if some of them thought maybe uh, uh, they were given a fair catch signal, I don't know what it was, or maybe they were overrunning, uh, losing uh, the position of the, of the kick. Uh, that's uh, Davis. Johnny Davis. And what a powerful uh, football player. He's only a sophomore and uh, I think won a scholarship uh, yesterday. I congratulate him. Uh, one of the Alabama linemen uh, won the other scholarship. This is the beginning of Alabama's first touchdown drive. Mike Stock at left end of the 42-yard line. And Johnny Davis, this time, breaks loose and is finally downed at the 50 by Rick Tellyard, number 91. In other words, when you tackle people like Johnny Davis, you're going to have to get him low and get a hold of those uh, uh, feet. 
uh, because he, uh, on that last play there, he, uh, they called pass interference there. But anyway, on Davis's last play, uh, he ran over about three Auburn defensive people. Pass interference call on the pass to Ozzie Newsom, and Alabama has a first down at the Auburn 34, and here comes Davis. Well, at that uh, business where you get one leg and you don't get them both, and, uh, and he's just like a wild bull when he gets into your secondary with these small defensive backs that we have. Incidentally, that was a fine tackle there by Bill Cunningham, number 25. Todd back, and he's dropped by number 93, Jim Pitts, but the uh, ball had been blown dead, and Alabama penalized for delay of game. And another one of those uh, close situations that makes a difference of some 10, 15 yards. Davis to the 25, a three-yard gain, and it's Tellyard and Pat LaRock on the stop. Second and 12 from the 25. And the pitch out this time goes from Todd to Willie Shelby, going around right in for eight yards before number 70, Steve Staniland, brings him down. And now Alabama has it third and fourth, the Auburn 17, and here comes the touchdown. Well, uh, that's right. Uh, that's just a crossing pattern, and, uh, and uh, we just don't have anybody over in that area. Rick Sanders, uh, number 38, was trying his best to get back. Pass complete to number 81, Jerry Brown, as the tide goes 84 yards in 10 plays. And now it's Ridgeway to attempt the extra point. It's up and good. And Alabama leads Auburn 7 to nothing with 2 minutes 49 seconds left to play in the opening quarter. Bucky Berry kicking off. Short kick and uh, Beck, Gary Beck, takes it on the bounce at the 3-yard line and fights his way out to the 23. I think by far the best uh, part of our play yesterday, uh, if you leave out the uh, punting of Clyde Bumgardner, was uh, kickoff returns. We had over 100 and 25 or 30 yards worth of kickoff returns that are never reflected in yardage, but they mean a great deal. And uh, one of them went for a long ways, but it was called back because uh, Gary Beck stepped on the sideline. Third and four from the 29, and McIntyre gets a yard to the 30. So Roy Cook led the tacklers. So it's fourth down, and number 10, Clyde Baumgartner, is back in punt formation for Auburn. And once again, I tell you another young man that's uh, done a great job all year is Tom Nettleman, the uh, center. It's, it goes in as a specialist. Tom is not a big boy, but he really puts a, uh, the ball right on the money, so to speak. It's got good speed, and Bumgarden handles it well, and it's part of the kicking game, I guarantee you, because without that snap, uh, you just don't get the ball on. Second and six on the final play of the first quarter as Culliver gets five yards, and that's the end of the first quarter with Alabama leading, Alabama seven, Auburn nothing. In that first quarter, Auburn had the ball for eight minutes, nine seconds, Alabama for almost seven minutes. Alabama has the ball now third and one from the 46, and Duffy Bowles gets to the Auburn 45 before number 95, John Smith, stops him. First and 10 for the Crimson Tide. And that's Duffy Bowles going up the middle again to the 36. Second and one. Bowles dives over center to the 30. He gets the first down, a six-yard gain. Well, you know, we, uh, uh, I guess, in, in all the scouting that goes on and talking with people, uh, a lot of people, I guess, including Alabama, uh, thought uh, uh, this place is going to be called back because there was a clipping penalty up there a little bit uh, further on back out of camera range. But that, the, uh, that if Alabama had a, a, an Achilles heel, it uh, uh, would be the offensive line. But, of course, we didn't notice that yesterday. Now, I've read that, uh, that Alabama perhaps played their best game. I don't know about that, but I, that should have been an interception there. But uh, anyway, uh, whether it's their Achilles heel or not, they, they did a splendid job yesterday. I thought Glenn Ward might get away here. He took that ball on the bounce at the eight-yard line and returned it to the 19. Well, that's pretty dangerous to do that, but yet on the other hand, in these years, I've seen some long runs as a result uh, of a little bit of daring. McIntyre fumbles, and Ostrowski recovers for Auburn at the 23. Pick up a four yards on the play, second and six. There's a good slow-motion shot of uh, McIntyre running... Uh, 
I guess you'd call it a misdirection play. That's one of those fancy new uh, uh, expressions used by some of the young coaches. Seven yard gain for McIntyre. And this time, Gargas hands it to Kenny Burks. And Burks heads up the middle and he fights his way yeah, to the... He does. Look at him. He, uh, Kenny Burks has been our strongest runner for the last two years anyway. McIntyre almost caught at the line, then tries to reverse his direction and is brought down behind the line for a nine-yard loss by Paul Harris. Third and 14 from the 26-yard line. Auburn comes up to the line, waits, and the flag will be thrown. And the Tigers will be penalized five yards for a delay of game. That'll put it back at the 21 and make it third and 19. Gargas. Screen pass over to Burks, but it's knocked down by Harris. Well, that was a fine defensive play by the left side of the Alabama line, and we did have some people over there lined up. And uh, if the ball had been uh, uh, completed, and gee, this was... Mm -hmm tough situation there. Alabama recovered back at the 24-yard line. What a break that would have been. Oh, yeah, yeah. There wasn't many breaks yesterday, and of course, that's a tribute to uh, the Alabama as far as I'm concerned. Todd, on a mix-up, gets out across the 25 to the 29-yard line where Raymond Fagan makes the stop. Second and five, and there goes Calvin Culliver getting maybe a couple of yards. Ricky Sanders stops him, number 38, third uh, and three. Kind of hard to pick out uh, many people on the old, but who made that tackle? Did you Raymond have Fagan. Raymond Fagan, number 45. Many people, uh, offense and defense, have stood out yesterday, but I guess Ricky Sanders, number 38 from Moniana, came about as close as anyone. Nelson Punt, punting, Neo bobbles it and recovers it at the 22-yard line with seven minutes, 41 seconds left in the half. Alabama still leading, seven to nothing. Well, uh, he did bobble it, and he did the wise thing, the smart thing, to just go ahead and fall, out, uh, fall on the ball. Now, look at this. Uh, uh, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, it's Kenny Burks, number 34, going out of bounds after a five-yard gain. A lot of backs would have gone down much earlier than that. So Kenny Burks has that fine leg drive and great desire to run with the football. We'll miss him. Third and five for the 27. Burks takes it on the draw play. Kenny again on the draw play, and he pick, has pretty good blocking, but stay with your blocks. He just runs out of that tackle, and he's overwhelmed right here. But he's still going forward, and he's still picking up a little yardage in spite of all that. A ten, well, that's the kind of back that I admire. A 10-yard gain for number 34, Kenny Burks. It's first and 10, Auburn at the 37. And the pitch out again goes to Burks, but he is hit immediately by King for no gain. And I take my hat off to him right there. That was a great defensive play, uh, but for holding on to the football. That was Beck, not Burks. I'm sorry. Pass. Right. Gary Beck. Pass this time goes downfield to Gilligan, and it's incomplete. Third and 10 from the 37. And Gargas goes back and tosses a long one downfield this time to Mike Henley, but it's incomplete. And the ball was thrown out of bounds anyway. I guess uh, Philip figured that Henley was pretty well covered there. Baumgartner punting on fourth down. Willie Shelby waiting for it back at the 14. Uh, that uh, way you're not under control, and uh, he nearly breaks this thing. And Shelby, of course, is the most dangerous man. Wouldn't be the first time he'd broken a punt. Brought it out to the 30-yard line. We're real proud of uh, our punt coverage, and it's been uh, great. Yesterday was not our finest hour on but uh, it was, uh, they did break one, let's put it like that. Second and six from the 34, Todd hands it off to Willie Shelby for maybe two yards before number 99, Liston Eddins, trips him up. Davis at left tackle to the 38, start by Carlos Hart after a two-yard gain. Rod Nelson into punt now from the 38-yard line on fourth down, waiting for it is Neal at the 29-yard line, and and he snowed under. There wasn't many times during the first half yesterday that Auburn didn't play uh, pretty good football. It, uh, got a break or two on fumbles, uh, but uh, uh, I say breakthrough, they run their linebackers through and we didn't pick them up and 
That makes it tough on the quarterback, tough on your passing game, as a matter of fact, to not have better protection. Second and 17 from the 23. And the screen pass over here to Jeff Gilligan. He gets a block, and he picks up a few yards. To the 30, and on top of that, there's a late hit, and the flag goes down, and Alabama will be penalized 15 yards for a personal foul, putting the ball at the 46. First and 10. And that's Gargas faking the handoff to Burks, but Gargas keeps it. Makes a good run, picking up another first down as he goes 11 yards to the Alabama 43-yard line. Well, that, that Philip uh, Gargas, uh, of course, he's about as tough as it come and a great competitor. And once again, uh, no protection. Though they drop uh, Gargas for a loss. Bob Barmauer made the tackle, second and 15 at the 48, a draw to McIntyre, and McIntyre is stopped for no gain. I get uh, Bob uh, Baumhauer, as a young man I had referenced to a while ago, who won a scholarship for Alabama yesterday. Third and 15 from the 48, McIntyre for one yard to the 47. And there was no daylight over there. So on fourth down, with just uh, seconds remaining, Clyde Baumgartner is in to punt. And once again, Alabama puts a great rush on. And this one is down at the nine-yard line, and Alabama then ran out the final 41 seconds of the first half with the score still. At the end of two quarters, Alabama seven, Auburn nothing. Alabama had the option in the third quarter and elected to receive, so it'll be Neil O'Donohue kicking off for Auburn. I thought maybe at this point, if Auburn could hold Alabama on the first series of downs, that it might really mean something later on, but as it turned out, Alabama takes this opening kickoff and uh, drives for a touchdown. Shelby brings the kickoff back and fights his way out to the 23-yard line, and look who's in there, number two, Neil O'Donohue. Neil O'Donohue, he likes to go down. Now, I've never seen as many people off balance and not under control as uh, on that kickoff team. And Shelby is uh, uh, the kind that dances around and jumps. Now, here's that fumble, uh, you know, uh, and... Uh, I think everybody on the field thought Auburn had recovered. And I think maybe the quarterback felt like he had fumbled the ball. I don't know. But anyway, uh, that's not the way it was called. Shelby. And that would have been one of those breaks we were looking for. Shelby picks up the first down at the 33-yard line, and then Davis gets to the 36, a three-yard gain. Number 91, Rick Tellyard stops in. And Todd gives it to Davis again, this time right up the middle to the 49-yard line before Cunningham can stop him, but it's a 13-yard gain. You know, in all my years, I don't know that I've ever seen a more powerful uh, running back than uh, John Davis here. That's just another example of what I'm talking about. Eight more yards. Oh, there might be a few people a little fancy and dance around a little bit more, but just for sheer power. Uh, I think I'd have to go with John Davis, and I'm very much aware of the fact that he has two big years left over there. Shelby. Now, that was a good tackle, and that was Bill Cunningham coming up from the safety position. Number 25 that made that tackle. First and 10 for Alabama at the 41. And they give it to Davis, who fights for three yards. We just uh, lack a little something. Uh, we, we stand around, we watch one or two people uh, hit, hit one of these backs, and we don't do anything about it. There were times yesterday when they had to pull 11 people off of Philip Gargas. That's the kind of defense we have had at Auburn in other years, and I hope one of these days we'll have it again. Well, uh, we just, uh, our defense completely broke down there, and uh, uh, one of our men went for the for Davis, as a matter of fact, when he should have been going for the quarterback. And so that, uh, that brought about a fine run there by Todd. Alabama went 77 yards in 10 plays on that drive. The touchdown run by Richard Todd was for 33 yards, and Ridgeway's point after is good. And now with 10 minutes, 26 seconds left in the third quarter, Alabama has increased its lead to 14 to nothing. Perry kicking off, and Beck's waiting for it in the end zone, and Beck's going to make a great return on this one, but he stepped out of bounds, I guess. At the About 24. the 40-yard line. Uh, it was a good run as it was, but uh, it had just been a lot better. Right in there, I guess, is uh, where he uh, stepped out of bounds, but gosh, it looked like at one time he might break that, and some, some of the people back of him and uh, blocked on some of that pursuit. He might have gone all the way. 
Carry but anyway, it was brought back to about the 40-yard, uh, 36-yard line. 36-yard line. Ran it down the balance. Down to 28. Gargas goes around right in for seven yards to the 43-yard line. Alan Pizzatola on the stop. Second and three from the 43 now for Auburn. And right along in here, uh, we were moving the ball pretty good. All right, he decided to run. And Phillip uh, has quick feet, and uh, he picked up some yardage there. Five yards for the first down, out to the 48-yard line. First and 10. Argus this time fakes it to McIntyre, pitches it to Burks at left end, and Burks crosses the 50-yard line. All right, that, that great desire and good movement there on the part of Kenny Burks. He's uh, has that fine body lean, and it's always in the direction uh, of the opponent's goal line, which is the earmarks of a great back. McIntyre stopped just short of the first down. They measured it, and it was maybe two or three inches short. And we have a fourth down situation coming up here, and so we go for it, and Gargas makes it. First and ten for Auburn at the Alabama 39. All right, things are, are looking real good here, but not for long because uh, uh, we have a pass interception. Could be on this play. Well, oh, Gargas uh, doesn't find around. his receiver and runs with this one to the 38-yard line, gets uh, a one-yard pickup. And it's on this play we get the interception. And it's a deflected uh, 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 pass type of interception. It's deflected right there and popped up in the air. And that's the kind that spells touchdown. That tackle was made by Ostrowski, the offensive tackle, number 64. And Gargas himself, number 11. Well, that's tough. Uh, and good, good or late play on the part of Alabama. First and 10 at the 44 as Alabama begins another touchdown drive. Davis takes it at left tackle into Auburn territory to the 45. An 11-yard gain of first down. Davis for three more. Tacklers led by Ricky Sanders, but a number of others in there. Now, that, that's fine defensive play there. Not only one man hit Davis, but a half a dozen. That's what it's going to take. Todd. Keeps it left in and out of bounds at the 27-yard line with just over six minutes left in the third quarter. He picks up 15 yards. I tell you, in the last three ball games we played, we've made great running quarterbacks out of a lot of people. And uh, start with Fred Golove at Mississippi State and Matt Robinson and Goff over at Georgia and Todd here today. Davis goes to the 20, a five-yard gain, third and three, five and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Ball at the Auburn 20-yard line, and Auburn jumps offside. Well, that's, uh, that's a difference a lot of times. Uh, you have to have that poise and stability and not make those mistakes. Look at this guy. All right, let's wait. Let's get 11, 12, 13, 14, or 15 people on him if necessary. Second and nine at the 14, Todd scores on this play. Takes it around left end and goes into the end zone, and Alabama goes ahead 20 to nothing. So from the interception, Alabama moves 56 yards in seven plays. And Ridgeway kicks the extra point through the uprights, and Alabama leads 21 to nothing. And fine protection there on the part of Alabama for the kicker. That flag up there gives you an idea about the wind. Uh, of course, a lot of this damage, Alabama's got the wind right in their face. Now, here's another fine return uh, by Rick Neal. It's a 55-yard return all the way to the Alabama 39-yard line. Now, we have a lot of people running along there, but it'd be a big help if they'd lay out and block. Gargas at right tackle to the 35, a four-yard gain. Well, that's uh, Philip Gargas doing the best he can under difficult circumstances and finally swarmed under. Pitch out goes to McIntyre. McIntyre's hit, fumbles, and Alabama recovers at the 37. Three minutes, 59 seconds left now in the third quarter. First and 10 from the 37, Culliver. Hit first by Carlos Hart, he loses a yard. That's great defense. That's what we need on every down. Culliver at right guard, but a flag is thrown on that one, and Alabama will draw a 15-yard penalty for holding. But they make it up on the very next play. Second and 23 from the 24. 
and it's Calvin Culliver taking it at left tackle. And he gets it out to the 45 yard line, a 21 yard gain. And now it's third and two from the 45. Cavan is stopped for no gain. And on fourth down, Todd goes back into punt formation, but he's not going to kick it. No, he's going to run with it, and he's going to pick up the first down. And uh, that is not the first time Alabama has done something from uh, punt formation. Uh, Todd caught from right. behind by Jim Pitts. Jim Pitts, very reliable young man. Jim Pitts, number 93. Todd is hit as he throws, and that one falls incomplete from midfield. Third and nine at the 50. Duffy Bowles goes at left tackle, picks up three yards. Steve Staniland leads the tacklers, others in there. Fourth down, Todd again to punt, but runs with it instead. And goes out of bounds at the 45-yard line, picks up only four yards, and it's short of the first down, so Auburn will take it at the 45 with 27 seconds left in the third quarter. And we have fine field position here, and uh, if you're ever gonna move, this is the time to do it. We have Clyde Baumgarten in the ball game, uh, number 10. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score now, Alabama 21, Auburn nothing. Going into the fourth quarter of play now, Legion Field in Birmingham. Auburn has the ball second and seven at the 48 yard line. Clyde Baumgartner, number 10, the quarterback. And on the first play of the fourth quarter, Baumgartner is back, throws a screen pass over to Henley, and Henley takes it across the 50 and down to the Bama 44. Seven yards and a first down. On the first down play, Baumgartner gives it to Kenny Burks up the middle, stopped for no game by the Alabama defense. Well, once again, I, I want to take my hat off to that Alabama defense, they, uh, they're quick and uh, they, uh, they play splendid football. And I've always felt, and most coaches do, that to have some sort of a football team, you have to have a great defense or you're not gonna have it. Baumgartner passing to Gilligan and Gilligan catches it and that goes out of bounds at the 33. But it's a nine yard gain and a first down. And then the Tigers are called for delay of game and that's gonna drop the ball back to the 38. Well, that's the second time that uh, we have taken too much time, and uh, they are costly. They keep moving you back. And Jeff Gilligan, I think he makes it up, doesn't he? Out of bounds at the 27, an 11 yard gain now, second and four from the 27. Baumgartner keeps it to the 25, third and two. And Baumgartner at right tackle, and he gets the first down going to the 23-yard line. Well, that's about as close as we've been. First down, pass to number 82, Ed Butler, incomplete. Second and 10 now from the 23, and Baumgartner goes back, looks downfield, but before he can find a receiver, he is dropped back at the 28 for a five-yard loss, and that makes it third and 15. And from the 28-yard line, Baumgartner again, passing this time to Burks, in and out of his hands. Well, that just uh, didn't quite look it in. So we bring on uh, Neil O'Donohue, and uh, keep in mind the wind now. Uh, we're going in the opposite direction. We're going into the wind. It's a real strong wind, and it looked real good, but of course the wind caught it, and you could see it hanging, and finally it dropped uh, uh, down before going uh, uh, over the crossbar. It was a well kicked ball. It was just a matter of too much wind. This very short, too. Alabama's first play, a pass complete up to the 30 yard line, but the tide was offside, so now it's first down back at the 15. But Shelby comes around right in across the 30, the 35, finally down at the 39 yard line, but it's a 24 yard gain for Shelby, and the tide has a first down at the 39. Davis to the 40, a one yard gain. Well, you know, I didn't like the 24-yard uh, gain, but the way the quarterbacks in the last three games have been running with the football, it was a little bit refreshing on the option play to see, um, see him have to pitch. Auburn draws a 15-yard penalty, a personal foul for face masking. Alabama with a first and 10 now at the Auburn 45. 
Todd bobbled the snap, picked it up, and throws to Brown incomplete. Well, that took some maneuvering there on the part of the quarterback to bobble that ball and still get it off. Alabama on its final touchdown drive, third and four from the 39. Todd's passing and it's complete to Ozzie Newsom, who's to the 29-yard line before Lance Hill brings him down. Stock goes to the 26-yard line, three yards more. Uh, there are a couple of people standing around that could uh, get in on the act. Culliver at left guard to the 24, stopped by John Smith. And now from the 24-yard line on third down, here comes the touchdown pass, and it'll go from number 14, Richard Todd, to Ozzie Newsom. And <clears throat> Newsom just absolutely outruns us. Uh, we obviously were caught too far to the inside, and, and uh, when he made his right turn there, he just outdistanced us. The tide goes 80 yards in nine plays to go ahead 27 to nothing, and as soon as Ridgeway kicks it, and here it comes, it'll be 28 to nothing, Alabama, with six minutes, 51 seconds left to play in the ball game. Barry kicking off with the Crimson Tide now, late in the ball game. It's another low kick, and Neal picks it up at the six, and gets no more than across the 10 and down to the 13 yard line. Well, fine kickoff uh, coverage there. And a well kick ball, uh, the kind that's tantalizing and bothers you. Delays everything. McIntyre for three yards to the 16, second and seven. Kenny Burks goes at the left side, stopped for no gain, and a face masking call on Alabama will give Auburn a first down up at the 31 yard line. Baumgartner, the quarterback, number 10. Throwing to number 34, Kenny Burks. Burks has it. Five yard gain to the 36. That was a delayed pass to a delayed back out of the backfield, I should say. And Long pass to Gilligan is incomplete. Third and five from the 36. Burks cuts in right tackle to the 41 yard line, just short of the first down. So it's going to be fourth and inches from the 41. And Baumgartner will sneak for the first down on this play. He has it at the 42-yard line. I was amazed on that quarterback sneak. Uh, it was obvious uh, that, he, that he, you know, in fourth down in inches, and he goes a yard, and then there's a big debate about whether they're going to measure it or not. <laughs> Uh, the pass that time to Reese McCall, incomplete. Third and 14 from the 38. Late in the game, screen over to McIntyre, but it's broken up, incomplete. Oh, well, they and that smell that out uh, real good and covered it extremely well. That essentially was the end of the game. Alabama got one more possession and moved down to the one-yard line, and there's the meeting at midfield between Coach Jordan and Bryant as Coach Jordan ends his coaching career at Auburn University. Final score in the final game, Alabama 28, Auburn nothing. <laughs>